Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. If you like this video, hit like. If you don't like it, hit dislike. I don't mind, honestly, I don't. Okay, so let's talk about how strong is the trend. Now listen, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're trading a market, you've got two decisions to make. You are either following the trend or you're fading the trend or in fact the third decision is you don't get involved in but let's talk about the two decisions you've got so if you're following the trend the big thing you want to know is which is the million dollar question obviously is is this trend going to keep going you know how much further is it going to keep going has it got the strength has it got the what's it's to keep going is it going to keep pummeling to the ground are we going to reverse we don't know that as traders, right? But all we can do is make a guess, a best guess as to whether this thing is gonna keep going and we're gonna make loads of money or it's gonna stop as soon as we buy at the high and roll over. It's gonna happen, by the way, guys, everyone's done it, you've done it, I've done it, we bought at the high, it's rolled over, we've been stopped out. That's the life of a trader. So how do we minimize that kind of thing? How do we quantify how strong the trend is? Now, for me, trend is basically supply demand, right? you have the market is an extreme supply or extreme demand. Let's talk about an uptrend. So we'll draw our kind of broad um, axes here and we have this trend. Now that is a strong trend. Now, when we have extreme demand coming in, we have aggressive buyers buying the offer, moving price higher, paying more and more and more and more and more, which is causing that trend to move an upwards momentum. When the supply demand shifts back to equilibrium, that's when we get the flat line because supply is matching demand, whether that's massive supply, massive uh, matching massive demand, or whether it's the supply and demand being, or sorry, demand going smaller and then just generally just causing it to, to pause. And then it comes back in again and we get massive, massive demand again, causing it to go um, people buying and buying higher and higher prices. It's the same for any market. We're looking at it in terms of uh, a stock market or financial market here. But it's the same for house prices. It's the same for secondhand car prices. It's the same for you know, any general commodity out there, memory card prices, for example. So how do we determine the strength of a trend? Let's get back to the point. How strong is it? Well, first of all, you may, well, you may well laugh at this, but just look at the chart. Honestly, guys, the amount of times you can use your human ability to decipher patterns and decide, it's the most powerful thing in the world. You can look at a chart. The, the, the angle of the trend is gonna give you a great example of how strong it is. If the market has taken, let's use that as a time frame and say that's a day, and it's gone up by 10 ticks over the day, and it's very, very shallow, that's not a strong trend. If it over the day, the, the, the line is generally like that and it's really aggressive, then that's a strong trend. Why is that the case? Because demand is way, way, way outstripping supply in that scenario. The trend is so aggressive. The price movement is so aggressive. People are prepared to pay more and more and more and more over such a short time frame that this trend is strong. Okay, that's fine. That makes a lot of sense. But how do we know the trend is gonna continue? We don't, but we can have some clues. Let's look at the clues. When we're buying a trend, we very, very, very rarely want to buy at the highs, very rarely. There are some circumstances where that may become a profitable strategy, but there are very, very few. Generally speaking, from my experience, if you're buying a high, you wanna be damn sure that you're at the beginning of the trend. That may well be after a catalyst, perhaps some surprise news has come out, it's spiked up a little bit. You still think there's got a lot to go by all means, but be prepared to be in pain as it pulls back a bit. So generally speaking, the best is to buy a pullback. So let's use the pullback area. Let's zoom into that to try and gauge the strength of the trend because this is the key. To me, this is the this is the the window into the soul of the trend, if that makes sense. It's the when we can get a little bit of an insight into see what the other side is doing because that's the key to the whole thing, guys. It's not what we know. There's a trend there. We know there are buyers there. We want to know if those sellers. Have they got it to step up to the plate? Oh, are they gonna step up to the plate and smash this thing into the ground? Let's see. So we get a push up, we start to get a pullback. What is that pullback? That pullback is either two things. If we say the supply demand again, we have a lot of demand coming in, which is causing the market to push up. Then at the pinnacle, 
This zone right here, what happens? What causes that to stop going higher? Because this is very, very important to understand this. Well, I think it's very, very important because it helps me get my mind around what I'm trading and I'm trading people. I'm not trading price, I'm trading people. At that point, one of two things is happening. Either the demand is still the same, but the supply is now slightly more aggressive. People are still buying. However, the aggression of the sellers is more so they are hitting those bids so they may still be the same volume flow and money flow coming in on the buy side however sellers may well be hitting that and thinking i still want to sell lower causing that to push lower. that's one scenario scenario two is that buying shuts off so buying pushing 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 they then say you know what it's gone a long way in a short period of time. Let's back off the throttle a little bit here. Let's go a little bit easy. Let's see what happens. We've got to, we've moved this thing a long way. We still want to buy more potentially. I want to see what happens on this pullback. It then they then back off. Sellers or supply starts to come in. It starts to hit a little bit of those bids. Starts to push the whole thing a little bit lower, demand has backed off. Maybe supply was the same as it was all the way up. Because obviously for every buyer, you've got to have a seller without going too deep into that. But at that point there, perhaps buyers backed off a bit and supply came in and drifted it lower. Now, this is where we can gauge the strength of the trend. Because what actually happens here, do we get this, bang, straight down. In other words, complete switch. Demand huge, all of a sudden supply huge, demand low. We've gone from this massive demand, very, very small supply, to now massive supply, small demand. We don't want that, that's not what we wanna see. What do we wanna see here? We wanna see that number one, supply is weak. In a perfect scenario, this is by the way, supply is poor. In other words, when demand backs off because they just wanna see what happens, the price doesn't go very low. Yeah, it takes a lot of time for it to encroach into this territory. That is a good indicator for us because if you can think about what that is saying, that is basically saying, hey, you know what? This is the price you would have got to sell your stock. Let's talk about stock, uh, using an example here. Now all of a sudden you're getting this much more of a premium for it over a very short period of time. Isn't that great value, guys? Sellers, are you interested? And if nobody is stepping up to the plate at that point, if no seller is saying, hey, actually, even though I'm getting um, you know, a 10% premium over however many days that may be, or a 50 tick premium over a 15 minute period, whatever we're talking about here, and they're still not thinking it as value, that's a really good indicator. If they're not perceiving it as value, if they're not selling it, if they're not coming in aggressive and pushing it lower, what's gonna happen next? The chances are that if they don't perceive it as value, these guys here who have been buying it still perceive it as value from the buy perspective. So this shallow move here is really telling us, hey, demand is still there, guys or it's telling us at least that supply is not considering this as a good place to get involved. And if demand has still got more to come, they're gonna get more aggressive. So the first thing we're looking at from the perspective of how strong the trend is, let me switch to a blue pen uh, here, is the size of the pullback.